Since 2019, the US car market has been on fire. First, it was the labor shortage, then it was the chip shortage, then the production reduction by automakers, then the market price adjustments, then the auto union strikes, and now 9% interest rates on a new car, even if you have stellar credit. Let's get into the video. Now, whether you're looking to buy a new car or a used car in the upcoming year, I'm gonna share with you five money-saving tips to help you keep more of your hard-earned money in your pocket. As always, chapter markers are down below in the description. Let's get into it. Tip number one, start the search early. You know what your best negotiating leverage is when it comes to buying a new car? It's not your down payment, it's not your credit score, it's your ability to say no. That's right, your ability to say no. Now, let me explain. You see, oftentimes what happens when people are looking to buy a car is they wait until they really need it. Maybe their lease is expiring, maybe they got into a car accident, maybe their car is on their last leg, or maybe they're expecting another child. All of these scenarios lead to the same outcome where you as the buyer really don't have the luxury of time. And when you're short on time, it makes it really difficult for you to say no, even if it's a ridiculously bad deal. Now, the best way to preserve your ability to say no is to start your search early. And when I say early, I mean at least three months before you actually need the car. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I like to say to dealers is, if the price is right, I'm willing to buy the car today, but make no mistake about it, I'm not in a rush. I can hold out until I get a really good deal. Tip number two, know the market, especially for the brand that you're looking to purchase. Let's face it, buying a car is like playing poker where both sides are trying not to show their hands too early. But one way you can zero in on just how much leverage you have when it comes to negotiating with a dealer is to understand the current car market, particularly for the same brand that you're looking to purchase. Now, this is not a complete list, but your research may look something like this. What are the current inventory and sales trends for the past few months? Is inventory tight for the brand that you're looking to purchase and specifically for the vehicle that you're interested in? The key thing is to know this information for the brand that you're looking to purchase. For example, if you're looking at GM or Ford, maybe they're hurting to sell vehicles right now, but if you look at Toyota, the number one selling vehicle brand in the US, they're struggling to keep up with demand in some areas. The other thing you want to consider is what's the best APR that dealers want to offer for well-qualified customers on new cars. Now you can look at new car commercials or you can do like I do and try to use their payment estimator on their website and oftentimes those payment estimator tools, they'll populate or pre-populate with a proxy of what they're likely to offer you if you're a well-qualified customer. Now that you have the dealership information in terms of what race they're likely to offer, you can shop around and try to see if you get something better. I know you made me think of, why don't I just go directly to the dealer and ask them what's their prime rate or what's the best rate that they offer to customers? Well, the short answer is it's a little bit more complicated. You see, the way it works is the dealer goes to the bank and says, hey, we've got a customer, a customer wants to buy a new vehicle or a used vehicle, what rate would you give them? And the bank will say, okay, based on their credit score and their credit report, we'll give them a 3% interest rate. The dealer takes that 3% and they add a spread or on top of it to inflate their profit margin. So now when they show you the interest rate, they'll say it's 5% as opposed to the 3%. That extra 2% helps to inflate their profit margin. And right now, given the way interest rates are, I mean, some dealerships like Toyota, for example, they're offering 9% interest rates to their well-qualified customers on new vehicles. You may actually think that 5% is a good deal, but you're getting ripped off. So you really need to shop around and not take the first answer for an interest rate that you get and think that you're getting the steal. Another thing to consider is whether car sales in general are increasing or slowing. For example, did you know that according to the Federal Reserve, as of July 2023, the average rate on a new five-year or 60-month car loan in the U.S. is 7.88%. Whereas, according to Cox Automotive's November report, the average interest rate on a new car in the U.S. is 9.79%. So, up from the 7.88%. Now, in terms of vehicle prices, new car prices in the U.S. have been increasing from just over $30,000 in 2012 to about $48,000 as of September 2023. And the average auto loan payment in the U.S., according to Experian, the credit rating agency, is now $726 per month. Tip number three, understand what others are paying. So let me ask you this question. What's a good deal on the vehicle that you're looking to purchase? Well, if you get it below MSRP, is that a good deal? And you may think it's actually a good deal, but right now, a lot of American manufacturers are actually offering discounts on the MSRP of their trucks. Now, the best way to see what the average selling price for the vehicle that you're interested in purchasing is, is truecar.com. 
Now this is not sponsored, but this allows you to take the guesswork out of it and see what others are actually paying for the same car that you're looking to purchase. Tip number four, negotiate online. If there's one thing that we all universally dislike, it's negotiating the price of a car. Luckily, negotiating online offers a number of advantages over in-person negotiations, such as no sales pressure, no time pressure, no face-to-face -face interaction, the opportunity to shop several dealers at the same time, the ability to pay attention to all the details of the deals that you're presented with, and it helps prevent you from making an emotional decision. Now there is a catch. So dealers will always try to push you to come in so they can get your emotions involved and so that they can extract the most information out of you to make their deal more profitable. So you have to be ready to push back and keep the negotiations online via email or via telephone. So for example, they'll say, Hey, we got the car in the inventory. When can you come in and do a test drive? Hey, okay, we've got the vehicle here. It's still available though. When would you like to come in? Hey, we still have that vehicle in inventory. When would you like to come in? Oh, would you like to do a test drive? No, I want to negotiate everything and then I'll come in to sign the paperwork. That's the way to do it. Tip number five, optimize your trade in value. And when it comes to your trade in value, the first question you should ask yourself is whether you are in a state that provides for a tax break based on the value of your trading. If you're in a state that offers a tax brace based on the value of your trading, you need to calculate the full value of the dealer's offer for your trade-in and compare that to any private offers you may have. Now let's look at an example. Say for example, you live in, let's say you live in Texas where the sales tax is 6.25% and the state offers a tax break based on the vehicle trade-in value. If your dealer offered you 6,500 for the trade-in for your vehicle, the full offer of their value is actually more than that. It's the 6,500 that they're offering for your vehicle plus the tax savings. So to calculate the tax savings, you would take that 6,500, multiply it by the 6.25%, and you'll come up with a savings of $406.25. Now, the total value of the offer that the dealer has given you is $6,906.25, and you just compare that to any private sale offers that you may get. Obviously, if you get a purchase offer for your trade-in outside of the dealer for more than the 6,900, then you'd be much better off taking that offer than accepting the dealer's offer. Now, oftentimes dealers will try to add a lot of mandatory accessories to the vehicle price to increase their profit margin. But one way to get around that is to actually Google the owner's manual for the vehicle that you're looking to purchase to see if the manual gives you some leverage as to why those accessories aren't needed. For example, Toyota and Infiniti, they're notorious for doing this and they like to add this thing called guide point, which is basically a GPS tracker or a low jack to their vehicles and they require a five year subscription. Now they claim it'll help you locate your vehicle if the vehicle is stolen, but if you read the owner's manual for Toyota vehicles at least, under the connected services portion, the vehicle actually has the built-in GPS and you can contact Toyota if your vehicle is stolen, no need to pay anything extra, and it will help you locate your vehicle for free. Now imagine how the dealership will respond when you say, I actually don't need this GPS system because the car already has it built in and according to the owner's manual for the vehicle that you're trying to sell me, you guys already do this for free. That's all we have time for today in this video. If you got value out of the video, please like the video and leave me a comment down below and let me know which information you found the most helpful. And until next time, peace.